What's up everyone, welcome back to another review. This time we're taking a look at Hot Fuzz, directed by Edgar Wright and co-written by Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg. Hot Fuzz tells the story of Nicholas Angel, who is a super cop, who is too good for his job at the police station that he's in, has pretty much grown frustrated by the fact that he's better than everyone else, so they have him transferred to a very small town where a series of accidents start to transpire, and now Angel leads investigation as to as to why this is happening. Okay, that's the overall story of Hot Fuzz. Let's talk about it. I love Hot Fuzz. This is probably my second favorite Edgar Wright movie. I think this movie is absolutely hysterical. Edgar Wright takes the buddy cop takes the buddy cop formula and he pretty much makes a parody slash satirization of that type of genre of movies. And Hot Fuzz to me is a perfect homage and tribute to those movies and also a hilarious satire and parody of those movies as well. And it's backed by a outstanding performance by by uh, Simon Pegg as Nicholas Angel who played who is the super cop. I thought Simon Pegg in the role is absolutely hysterical. Him he gives Nicholas Angel the he Nicholas Angel is pretty much that John McClane Willis from Die Hard type of cop, like he's the super cop, and Simon Pegg did an absolutely fantastic job at, at, at bringing the character of Nicholas Angel to life, while all the while you have his comedic partner in crime, Nick Frost, playing Danny Butterman, who is the cop of this small village, who, village, who is more of a uh, bumbling type of cop, he's more of a, he's the comedic the comedic foil to the seriousness of Nicholas of Nicholas Angel, and as usual, Peg and Frost have outstanding on-screen chemistry, and they're two and these, and these characters they work together on screen. The seriousness of Nick of Nicholas Angel bounces off really well off the bumbling, light-hearted nature of the Danny Butterman character, and as the movie progresses, we actually see Butterman adapt, uh, uh, you know, become influenced by Angel in a way. He starts and slowly starts to become a better cop in his own right, uh, which I thought was great. Uh, I also love the fact that Butterman is a movie fanatic, and he knows all about the buddy cop tropes by making numerous references to movies like Bad Boys 2 and Point Break and, and, Point Break and Die Hard itself. So that stuff's hilarious. All, 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 that stuff's hilarious, too. Uh, they're backed by an outstanding supporting cast that includes Timothy Dalton, Timothy Dalton who plays Skinner, uh, Timothy, Timothy Dalton in this movie is great. Uh, I love how Edgar Wright pretty much flat out says, yes, this man is the villain. And, and he doesn't try to hide the value. Like, so this movie is like a satirization slash parody of body cop movies. And what makes this movie work is the self-referential humor that it has. So by, by Edgar Wright pointing out that Timothy Dalton is the villain of the piece, he is he's the guy committing all these crimes. It's that it adds that extra level of comedy to it. Not to mention Timothy Dalton, he's just great in the movie. I thought he was really, really funny. Um, you have a supporting cast that includes Jim Broadbent, who's in this movie, who plays the police captain Frank, who's actually the father of Danny Butterman. I thought he was fine in the role as well. And you also have a slew of other actors who also play the roles as well. I like the rivalry that like that. Uh, I like the hostility. And rivalry that Nicholas Angel has with some of his police, but with some of his uh, compatriots. Like, um, there's this one character. There are these two characters uh, called the Andes. Who constantly poke fun at Nicholas because he's like a top cop who thinks danger is around every corner, and they're quick to rebut everything. I thought the rivalry between between I thought that stuff was that was actually really really funny. There's also this other character whose name escapes me. I can't remember what his name was, but uh, he's a character who wears glasses. And there's legitimately, his introduction scene, there's literally a, a billboard that describes, a blackboard that describes all of his traits. I thought he was really funny as well. well as like this, as like this, uh, as this cop who is not good at his job. And he constantly needs Nicholas to point out the obvious, so that way you'd be like, oh, yeah, that's what he said. I thought that stuff was funny to itself as well. Uh, the action sequences in this movie are fantastic. They're joyfully over the top. And they're very reminiscent of movies of... Of movies like Bad Boys and Die Hard, and I thought Edgar Wright did a really good job at directing these action sequences. They're really well done. Uh, the comedy in this movie, to me, it absolutely works. Uh, Edgar Wright's signature style applies awesomely to this movie. Uh, the many cameos this movie has from actors like Martin Freeman, Bill Nye, 
and uh, Steve Coogan is hilarious as well. Like, we see them at the beginning of the movie, then they come at the end of the movie. They, they pretty much played Nicholas Superiors, who will get him transferred to this little uh, town in England. So I enjoyed that. I, I, I like that, all that stuff as well. Uh, the story behind this movie, it is interesting. But I think when, the movie, when you actually get to the twist and the motivations, I actually think it's kind of convoluted and confusing. I think this movie should have just stuck with Skinner just being... Just being a sole villain and having his motives be that he wants to eliminate competition. He wants to eliminate competition since he owns this uh, supermarket, and that's the only supermarket in the town that he's in. I think the whole thing of having this neighborhood watch cult and everything being, you know, like that kind of it kind of feels to me very very convoluted, but it does lead to an outstandingly thrilling gunfight in the middle of the town square. Which is actually one of the best scenes in the entire movie. The best, one of the best action sequences in the entire movie, and the chase scene that also transpired. It's actually really fun as well, which leads to a brawl between Angel and Skinner, which I also thought was fun as well. So, yeah, those are actually my overall thoughts on Hot Fuzz. At the end of the day, to, to me, Hot Fuzz gets a solid nine out of ten. I love this movie. I think it's great. I like it on par with Baby Driver, though I like Baby Driver maybe one step more. But yeah, those are my thoughts on Hot Fuzz. Let me know yours in the comment sections down below. Like the video and subscribe. And I will check you back next time for more.